Hello and welcome to Right Now for Tuesday the 28th of November 2017. I'm Tim Wilms. The votes are still being counted in the Queensland state election. However, it looks like Labor Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk will win a majority of seats in the Queensland Parliament. Most of the discussion post-election is how the Liberal and National Parties should deal with One Nation. Federal MP George Christensen believes that the LNP did not listen to the concerns of Conservative voters and blame the leadership and direction of the Turnbull government for the result. Meanwhile, Attorney General George Brandis claimed that dealing with One Nation is poison. One Nation looks like winning one seat despite obtaining 13.7% of the primary vote. It would be very premature to write off One Nation following this result, as there's a, there is still a large segment of the community that is broadly supportive of their political agenda. The ABC's youth radio station Triple J has decided to move its annual Hottest 100 music countdown from its traditional date of January... 26th, which is Australia Day, to January 27th and will be held on the fourth weekend of January every year. This decision was made after the station consulted with the music industry, Indigenous leaders and held a survey of 65,000 of their listeners with 60% supporting a change in date. Triple J claim this will allow the Hottest 100 to be more inclusive, though it is hard to see how buying into the claim that our National Day celebrates genocide really brings Australians together. This decision by a division of the ABC is part of the broader attack on Australia Day this year, where we, we have seen multiple inner Melbourne councils cancel their Australia Day celebrations. This movement does nothing to promote social cohesion and denigrates Australia as a nation. The Senate is sitting this week to debate the same-sex marriage bill following the yes result in the Marriage Law Postal Survey. Conservative senators are still hopeful of securing a number of amendments to the Dean Smith Bill, which only offers basic protections to ministers of religion and existing civil celebrants. The freedom of bakers and florists to refuse service to same-sex weddings will not be proposed, but even the amendments aimed to protect freedom of speech and parental rights are not guaranteed to pass, with Labor and the Greens stating they will not accept what they call any further watering down of the Smith Bill. Zimbabwe's new president, Emerson Manguawa, has made a promising start to his rule, pledging to compensate white farmers whose land was seized under the Mugabe regime. He has vowed to be a president for all citizens, regardless of colour, creed, uh, region, tribe, totem or political affiliation. This change in direction for the nation is also a pitch to have Western sanctions lift, lifted on Zimbabwe and to attract foreign investment to help rebuild the nation's shattered economy. It is not often that wrongdoing against white people is conceded by any government, so this is a huge step forward. Many were sceptical that much would change in a post-Robert Mugabe Zimbabwe, but we can now be cautiously optimistic. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe, and check back here again soon to, to see what is happening right now there.